Tony Curtis, the renowned actor, passed away September 29, 2010, leaving behind a legacy that spanned over six decades. However, recent accusations from Kim Novak have called the actor's legacy into question. Join us as Facts First presents Tony Curtis died 13 years ago. Now Kim Novak makes a bold accusation. Early Life Tony Curtis, born Bernard Schwartz on June 3, 1925, in the Bronx, was an actor and one of the most recognizable leading men of Hollywood's golden age. From his humble beginnings in a working-class Jewish family to his rise as a celebrated actor, Curtis left an indelible mark on the film industry with his talent, charm, and versatility. His early life was marked by hardship and adversity. He grew up during the Great Depression, and his family struggled to make ends meet. His parents, Emmanuel and Helen Schwartz, were Hungarian immigrants who worked hard to provide for their family. Curtis often drew inspiration from his mother, who instilled a love for cinema in him by taking him to double feature movies on weekends. Curtis faced several challenges, including a bout of rheumatic fever that left him bedridden for nearly a year. During this time, he developed a passion for drawing and painting but it was his undeniable talent for mimicry and acting that shaped his future. In 1942, he enlisted in the Navy during World War II, serving as a signalman aboard the USS Proteus. While in the Navy, he continued to pursue his passion for acting by organizing and performing in various shows for his fellow servicemen. After the war, he enrolled in the dramatic workshop of the New School in New York City, where he honed his acting skills under the guidance of renowned acting coach Stella Adler. Determined to break into the business, Curtis adopted his stage name, Tony Curtis, inspired by his favorite novel, Anthony Adverse. Film Debut Curtis made his film debut in 1949 with a small role in Criss Cross. Though his initial roles were often uncredited or minor, his talent and charisma quickly caught the attention of Hollywood producers. In 1950, he signed a contract with Universal, marking the beginning of his ascent to stardom. Throughout the 50s and 60s, Curtis established himself as a versatile actor, showcasing his range in various genres, including comedy, drama, and romance. Some of his most notable films include Houdini, Sweet Smell of Success, Some Like It Hot, and Spartacus. His role in Billy Wilder's Some Like It Hot, opposite Marilyn Monroe and Jack Lemmon, remains one of his most iconic performances. The film, which showcased Curtis's comedic timing and cross-dressing skills, solidified his status as a leading man and earned him critical acclaim. He also explored other avenues in the industry. In the late 50s, he formed a production company, Curtly Productions, which allowed him to have more control over his projects. He also starred in the popular sitcom The Persuaders alongside Roger Moore in the 70s. Personal Life While Curtis's career reached great heights, his personal life was marked by numerous struggles and setbacks. He was married six times, with notable marriages to actresses Janet Leigh and Christine Kaufman. His marriage to Lee produced two daughters, Jamie Lee Curtis and Kelly Curtis, both of whom went on to have successful acting careers. He also battled personal demons like drug addiction, which he eventually overcame. He faced financial difficulties due to poor investments and a lavish lifestyle, but he rebuilt his life and career through perseverance and a commitment to his craft. In his later years, he focused on character roles and supporting parts in film and TV. His dedication to his craft earned him numerous accolades throughout his career. He received a Golden Globe nomination for Some Like It Hot and was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 1995, he was awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award by the Venice Film Festival. He was also an accomplished painter. His artwork, often featuring vibrant colors and bold strokes, gained recognition in the art world. He held numerous exhibitions of his paintings and even released a book titled Painting as a Pastime in 2001, showcasing his artistic talent. In his later years, he became an advocate for various causes, including the fight against AIDS. He used his platform and celebrity status to raise awareness and funds for organizations devoted to the cause. His philanthropic efforts and commitment to giving back were a testament to his kind-hearted nature and desire to make a positive impact on the world. He passed away in 2010 at age 85. His legacy as a Hollywood legend and cultural icon lives on. His incredible body of work and enduring influence ensure his name will forever be etched in the annals of history. Kim Novak's Accusations 
In a shocking revelation that will impact Tony's legacy, though, iconic actress Kim Novak, best known for her role in Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo, has come forward with a disturbing incident that happened during Hollywood's Golden Age. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Novak disclosed that she woke up disoriented and unclothed after attending a party hosted by Tony in 1958. This revelation sheds light on the dark underbelly of abuse that tarnished the glitz and glamour of the film industry in that era. Novak recalls that Tony Curtis had offered her a drink at the party, after which her memory becomes hazy. She suspects her drink was spiked, as she had only consumed one drink and had never experienced a blackout before. Her memory of the events that transpired after drinking the beverage remains a blank slate, and she remains perplexed about how her car ended up parked outside her apartment. She believes that Tony Curtis, who passed away in 2010, may have been responsible for what happened. But in an era where discussions about such incidents were taboo and victims often remained silent, Novak didn't have the support of movements like Me Too, which emerged decades later. She explains that during that time, people simply didn't talk about such things. Her experience of waking up the next morning without her clothes on left her deeply unsettled. The incident isn't an isolated one for Novak. She also recalls enduring multiple Me Too experiences at the hands of influential figures in Hollywood during the 50s and 60s. But she clarifies that Tony Curtis was not among her perpetrators. The mistreatment she faced extended beyond sexual harassment as she also faced derogatory remarks from then-Columbia Pictures studio head Harry Cohn, who regularly referred to her as the dumb, fat Polak. Kim, however, was none of those things. She was intelligent, slim, and not of Polish descent. Cohn's prejudice even extended to her relationship with Sammy Davis Jr. Cohn barred them from getting married, threatening violence. Following Cohn's death and the subsequent decline of the studio system, Novak chose to step away from the limelight in the mid-60s. But she made a brief return during the 2014 Oscars as a presenter. But her appearance became the subject of ridicule when Donald Trump suggested via tweet she should sue her plastic surgeon. In recent years, Novak has dedicated her time to painting, showcasing her watercolor, pastel, and oil creations at the Butler Institute of American Art in Youngstown, Ohio. Did Tony get Marilyn pregnant? Another shocking revelation that's been made about Tony Curtis came from his own memoir. In a memoir that was published around his death, Tony Curtis made shocking claims about his relationship with iconic actress Marilyn Monroe. The memoir, called The Making of Some Like It Hot, reveals Curtis and Monroe had an onset affair during the filming of the movie, which ultimately led to Monroe's pregnancy. But tragedy struck as Monroe suffered a miscarriage. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know about these accusations from Kim Novak against Tony Curtis? Let us know in the comments section below.